Hi friends, we are so happy to see you today. And we're talking about stories. Barry, I'm wondering if you've ever heard the story about the city of Atlantis. What I know of it was that it was an island continent long ago, don't know how long ago, but it was a, um, a civilization uh, that was very uh, advanced and then sunk into the sea. And um, some people think that that civilization still exists. That's true. Okay, how about stories about mermaids? Mermaids, that's kind of has a human body and uh, the bottom of a fish, you know, that the top of them's like a human, the bottom's like a fish. Don't know if they're true. I've never seen a mermaid in all the times that I've been fishing, but uh, I'm keeping my hopes up. <laughs> okay, how about the story of Robin Hood? Robin Hood, I'm very familiar with that story. <clears throat> he was uh, in England and lived in uh, Sherwood Forest and he robbed from the rich and gave to the poor. That's the way that story was. And that's a, that's a legend. That's an ancient legend. All right, so these are all examples of really familiar stories. Um, when a story has been told over and over and over again, sometimes it will be called, like Barry just said, a legend or a myth. So those stories that have been around for a long time, legends or myths, but I'm wondering what stories you all like. Those ones that you wanna hear over and over again, you know, what are they about? Who are the characters in them? There's just something about a really good story. And a really good story will actually make you keep thinking about it even after the story is done, which I love that. Um, so Barry, how do you think storytelling, why is that even a thing, storytelling? I think it's just a way that people have always transferred information, you know, just that <clears throat> somebody knows a story, you're sitting around the campfire a couple thousand years ago, and if you know a story and you start telling it, and I'm not familiar with the story, or maybe I even am familiar with the story, I just like listening to it because it has a, it has a thread to it. And I think down throughout time, people have just passed stories down from generation to generation, you know, father to son, mother to daughter, just stories about the way things are and the way things work. And, you know, in ancient times, people used to draw on the walls of caves and they would have like different scenes that they put on stage and it, it was their way of telling a story. And I think storytelling is the, kind of the oldest way of uh, getting information and ideas across that we have. So there's a thing about stories. Are all stories true? No, not all stories are true. When a story is not true, we sometimes call that fiction. So are all stories true? No. Are some stories true? Yes, some stories are true. And some of those stories that become myths and legends are actually true stories that have been told over and over for so long that as the story gets told, bits and pieces of it might not be true anymore. Things get changed or things get added, things get taken away. But I think the most important part of those myths and legends and those stories is that the feeling that you get and the way they make you think, that part of the story continues all through time. And that's really the most important part. And that thinking and feeling, Barry, tell me more about that. Well, I think, you know, when we hear a story, and we hear about what the characters are going through in the story, what the main character is going through, we kind of share those feelings with that character. If they're in danger or if they're falling in love or if they're growing up and discovering things, we kind of share those feelings with the character and it brings up emotion in us and that's why we like stories. I think a thing to remember is we have our own story. We're the main character in our own story. And so we have the feel, the feelings and emotions that come up in our story. And as we grow up, um, we carry those pieces of the story with us. And we want to be, uh, we want to be aware of the pieces that we're carrying forward and what our story sounds like in our own head and what feelings and emotion our story brings up. 
Yeah, so we know stories have power. And so you want to make sure that the story that you're telling about yourself is a good one and that it really has the feelings and the ideas that you want in your story. But remember how we talked about how things could be true or not true? You can tell your story as it actually is, and you can also tell your story as you want it to be. So that's really cool. I bet a lot of you have heard a really good storyteller before. And guess what? Each of you is your own best storyteller. But can I change my story? Who can change my story, Barry? Well, I think you want to be true about your story, but you also want to put yourself uh, in a position where you see how your story can grow. And so you want to be, you're the main character in your story. So you want to make sure that you're um, <clears throat> putting yourself and your story in a positive light. Not by making up stuff about yourself that isn't true, <clears throat> but about seeing the gifts that you have and that those are a part of your story. So I like the idea of thinking about 200 years in the future. What are people going to say about you? What will your story be? What would you like people to remember? What would you want those feelings and ideas to be in your story? I don't know, Barry, do you know what you would want the feelings and ideas in your story to be 200 years from now? Uh, well, I hope they would make people laugh uh, that my story would be that I liked being with kids and I like playing music and that uh, I liked making people laugh. That would be good for me. That would be perfect for you. All right, so we have an affirmation for today. And our affirmation is, I am the amazing character in my story. I am the amazing character in my story. Yes, you are. All right. Thanks, friends. See you next time.